I was never notified that my bank accounts had been frozen and I was never notified that they would be. And I was never notified um, that they were uh, reinstated at no time. Let me ask you a couple questions. You guys have been lying for three years. I don't want to talk to you. Hey everyone, William Diaz here with Rebel News covering the Emergency Measures Inquiry here straight from Canada's National Capital. We're here for the next few weeks since Justin Trudeau invoked uh, back in February, never seen before Emergencies Act, the successor to the War Measures Act on peaceful law-abiding protesters to travel from all across the country to process the federal COVID-19 measures after nearly four weeks of peaceful demonstrations. Now on uh, November 2nd, we saw Freedom Convoy participant Tom, Tom Morazzo testify for the first time in front of the Emergency Act Inquiry Committee after having been in attendance in the crowd for the past three weeks. Through his testimony, Marazzo spoke about media bias, policing issues, and the public's trust in our, in our institutions and more. Take a look at some of his more notable moments. Over the time of COVID, noticed things that I never before believed that I would see in, in Canada related to the way the police and bylaw and the government were going after Canadians. I was there, okay. uh, I was only 15 feet away from the horses when they trampled the two people. So then you would have heard prior to the arrest taking place um, multiple verbal warnings from police officers indicating that if people didn't depart, they risked being arrested. Is that? No, I did not hear them verbally. The front line of police officers were extremely quiet. The front row of protesters were trying to engage the police in dialogue and to convince them to stop doing what they were doing. And there was no reaction from the police on the front line. After talking about the reasons why he came to Ottawa to process COVID-19 mandates, Morazzo touched on the fact that the organizers did their very best to keep a lane open to ensure access for emergency services vehicles. While testifying on the issue, Morazzo also explained why it was so important for him to ensure that this worked. Here's what he said. You know, I'm very aware of keeping the emergency lanes open. It, it is an important issue for me. So the first thing we did was start identifying uh, hospitals. Uh, we identified the police station, fire departments, vulnerable infrastructure, and then started to plan out the routes to those uh, in, a, in an effort really to make sure that those lanes were always accessible. So that's really where we started. And then we, I, I needed to get a handle on where all the vehicles were, were located. And that was a monumental task because at the time, Trucks were coming to the city, trucks were leaving the city. There was a huge uh, just change in our overall um, size of the convoy overall. So really that, that first day was about just getting a handle on where everybody was and, and the size uh, and scope of the convoy. During cross-examination, Paul Champ, lawyer for the Ottawa Coalition, the anti-convoy residents of Ottawa, made a scene with Tom Morazzo. Champ questioned him about his views of a controversial right-wing figure, Jeremy McKenzie. Paul Champ ended up asking Tom if McKenzie's accountant is a Jew. Take a look at what Tom said. If you were to meet some of Jeremy McKenzie's friends and the ones that were on the video that I was describing earlier where they were laughing about the Liberal Party using Diaglon as a justification, you'll see clearly that one of Jeremy's best friends is a black man. There's, I don't, I, I can't even comprehend how somebody... Does he have a Jewish accountant somebody, as well? Sorry? Does he have a Jewish accountant as well? I Sir, don't even know what that have you means. Looked at Following the testimony, Marazzo conducted a media scrum outside of the public room where he ignored mainstream media reporters. Let me ask you a couple questions. You guys have been lying for three years. I don't want to talk to you. Telling them they, they, they've been lying for the past three, we, uh, three years, basically. I was able to ask Tom a few questions before he left the crowd following a question asked by a reporter for Le Droit. Morazzo, on the other hand, graciously answered questions asked by True North senior reporter Andrew Lawson and myself as well. Watch how it went. We heard from a, fr a fringe number of witnesses from the past few weeks that we, they saw violence throughout the convoy. Did you see that yourself? Do you think that represents the essence of the movement? I saw a lot of violence on the 18th and 19th of February, and it was all from the police. That's all. What are your thoughts on Jeremy McKenzie? You spoke about him a little bit earlier. Can you elaborate on what you think of his views? Jeremy's got a lot of controversial things that he says. Some things are great. Some things I disagree with fundamentally. Mm -hmm. um, but he's an entertainer. 
uh, like it or not, he says things that are controversial. Um, and that's what entertainment is about. You can tune in or turn it off if you want to. You also said the media wrongfully represented your, your position during the convoy, wrongfully represented Freedom Convoy. Can you elaborate on what exactly you meant by that? Yeah, and I, I talked about it in the, the testimony today uh, where, you know, they, they vilified people or vilified the comments that I made for basically saying that uh, I wanted to form a government or be part of a government. That was not the intent of those comments. Uh, they never retracted it after we did the updated uh, statement saying we wanted nothing to do with the uh, internal workings of the government, but uh, the media never corrected that. They just continued on the uh, the vicious attacks and the narrative that they wanted all along. Yeah, that can, served their can, can you also explain? So you weren't an organizer at the beginning, but you were also only a spokesperson, as you said, for two days. So why, why were you testifying on the stand uh, today in the inquiry? I was summoned, uh, summoned to be here like all the other witnesses. And last question for me, do you think there's ever a way that our country can recover from the damage that was done from the politicians and the police in the past two years? The people of Canada have no voice, they have no power because of the legacy media constantly lies and misrepresents everything that uh, has been going on for two years. And uh, I think the media is, is When the media decides to be on the side of the people, then I think you'll get some change. But right now, they're on the side of the government who constantly lies. Well, there you have it, folks. Here's everything you need to know about what went on during the Emergencies Act inquiry as Tom Morazzo's testified. If you want to see more, feel free to tune in during our daily evening live stream. They take place every day from 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for watching. This was William Diaz here with Rebel News. If you want to stay tuned with everything that is happening here in Ottawa during the Emergencies Act inquiry, make sure to go ahead and visit truckercommission.com. There you will also be able to help us fund our independent journalism once again straight from Canada's national capital.